Okay, so welcome everybody. I'm John Lomani. This is Christina Gavrilets. Hi everyone. Um, she's our nurse practitioner here. And tonight we're talking about PRP hair restoration. So we're excited about talking about this one. This is uh, one that's close to my heart, okay? Mm -hmm. For obvious reasons. And uh, let's start. All right, so make sure to pay close attention. We're gonna have some giveaways along the way. Feel free to put any questions into the chat. We'll be monitoring that and we'll come back to questions at the end. Okay, so this is confusing. So, Christina, you can talk about it. Yeah, so whether you're joining us by Facebook or Instagram Live tonight, at the end of the event, you're going to click on this link and you're going to fill out a contact form so that we can get in touch with you to book a consultation. And by filling out this form and booking a treatment, you're going to receive a $50 Metastatics gift card. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's go back to the basics, John. Okay. Tell us a little bit about what a normal hair growth cycle looks like. Okay, so we talk about four different phases, uh, the antigen, catagen, telogen, and exogen phase. They all last different amounts of time. The growing phase, which is the antigen phase, uh, can last between three and five years. And this is during the phase your follicles are pushing out hairs, and they kind of continue to grow until they're cut or they fall out. The catagen phase is called a transition phase. It's shorter. It can be up to about 10 days. And the telogen phase is your resting phase, and the exogen phase is when you shed, and new hairs start to grow uh, out from there. So on average, the average person loses about 50 to 100 hairs a day. So, you know, that seems like a lot, but if you just lose it in, in transit, you find it in your food, um, <laughs> and, uh, or, in, or in your pillow. So a lot of people who are losing hair will kind of be counting the hairs in their pillow. Um, that's kind of a, a phase that some people go through uh, as they're losing hair that they first kind of notice it happening. Uh, or else they're seeing hairs in the shower. Those are the common places that people will start seeing these things when the combs are brushed if they comb their hair. Okay, so we know hair loss is a common complaint that we see. And now that we know about a normal growth cycle, what are some potential causes of hair loss? Okay, so we see this a lot. So in family practice, we have patients that come in, you know, very often it's a big concern they have. The most common is the androgenic. That's your hormonal hair loss. Okay, that's the one that is a predictable pattern, has a genetic uh, component to it, and it has a. We'll show some slides and the next up one there. But just males have a, a distinctive pattern, and so do females. So that's that's distressing and certain your late teens uh, for some, and continue your twenties, thirties, forties, and beyond. Um, so that's one where we'll focus on tonight because that's where PRP can be very helpful. You know, the other one is involutional alopecia. That is your that's just normal aging. That's your silver haired 70, 80 year old man whose hair is just thinning and that's just part of the natural process. Um, and there's not much we do for that either. Um, alopecia areata, if anybody's had it out there who's listening, they'll certainly know what it is. It's an autoimmune disorder. It attacks the, attacks the hair follicles. It can be quite a distressing condition for anybody who's had it before. It can be as simple as just having some small circular areas where you wash your hair to complete hair loss. And that can be you know, it starts, it can be alopecia areata. There's a condition called alopecia totalis where you lose hair all throughout your body. So that's that's not, not a nice condition to have. Uh, but some people have it and they'll just have one or two episodes where they'll, they'll have a couple patchy losses of hair um, and it grows back. You can use some topical creams and it improves and that's that's what you hope for. Uh, and then to the extreme where some people can lose almost complete loss of all their hair. Um, so that's very, uh, very stressful. You see, see telogen effluvia. That's a big word. The uh, in my office, we have to we type that word out. The nurses are always we look that one up. Um, that's a, as again quite common as well. So this is one where it's typically after a stressful period in your life, but it doesn't happen right away because you can see from the stages of hair growth, it's often delayed. So if you had, let's say, somebody's had a death in the family, something a very stressful time, hospitalization, you're in intensive care, you've been pregnant, you've had a delivery, three or four months later, you'll start noticing your hair falling out, and it's 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 everywhere. It's not just in a particular clumps. And you'll go either kind of a test where you just put some pressure in your hair and uh, the men or women will come to your office and there'll be clumps of hair coming out. It's not focal, it's not in small areas. It's kind of generalized. So again, that is one where we tell people, hold tight, like it will get better. Uh, there's blood work that we do. We do an assessment to make sure there's nothing else going on. Um, but it's kind of a catch, it's a catch 22. You're, you've had a stressful event a few months before you start losing your hair, you get more stressed, it causes more hair to fall out. So this is one where you just need reassurance and time, and we have to tell them that this is not going to be a permanent condition. So that, that's one that's very stressful. 
Scarring alopecia, again, very stressful on people as well. You can see um, this is probably alopecia, is alopecia areata. This could be scarring. And again, we don't use PRP for this. You're losing the hair follicles here. There are certain conditions that can cause that uh, uh, condition. Again, some are autoimmune conditions, but again, that's not one for PRP. Traction alopecia, you sometimes see if you're wearing a bun or your hair quite tight, you'll see that the hair will start falling out in discrete places where there's maximum tension. That's completely reversible. You just stop wearing your hair a certain way and the hair will grow back. Um, as far as medication, like chemotherapy is one everybody thinks about. It can destroy the hair, can damage the hair follicles. Um, there are certain other medications that cause hair loss as a side effect. Again, you stop taking the medication, the follicles get restored and the hair grows back. So the one that we focus the most common is the first one. This is the one that's based, based on the hormonal uh, cause of hair loss. Yeah, so it sounds like lots of different causes and makes it very important to have a proper diagnosis. Yeah, so that's, this is why we do, for anybody who's going to have a consult, I'll have a consult in my, in my office uh, typically because there's a lot of work we need to do. Uh, and once we determine that it is, it's androgenic, it's not another type of scarring hair loss, I will often sometimes run like a thyroid test, make sure it's not autoimmune. There's certain tests that we'll do. So we don't just jump into a treatment. We need to do a thorough examination consultation. All that is not, you don't need to pay for that. That's all, all covered um, or free. We don't be on charge for those at all. So that's important, first of all, to have that thorough investigation assessment. And once we determine it to be androgenic, then we can move on and start talking about treatment options. All right. So let's focus a little bit more on the androgenetic alopecia, yeah. which is the um, kind that we can treat here with PRP. Yeah. So... Certain people will have, if it's a genetic component, so your hair follicles will be sensitive to something called DHT. So testosterone is the male L hormone. It gets converted to dihydrotestosterone. And some people, if they're, uh, if they're genetically predisposed, will actually have uh, that increase versus the DHT, making those hair follicles go dormant, eventually fall out. So it is unfortunately genetic, uh, not that you can't reverse the, your genes, Unfortunately, but uh, there are medications that have been out there that are trying to block the DHT, and I'll, I'll go through that in the next slide. Okay. We, we look at the difference, uh, again, we look at the androgenic. We look at the picture, as we can see it here. Here's your, your classic, we, we use a Norwood scale for men, but it starts off with the M pattern. Okay, so that was probably me in my early 20s, right? So <laughs> it, just, it gets worse, it becomes more of an M shape. So where I'd like to think I am now, but I think I'm here, okay, or four. So, and then eventually it will become five, six, seven, right? So this is where it's where it's happening. Um, and that's your, it's classic. There's almost every male will, will go bald the same way. And um, for women, it's slightly different. It's more midline, as you can see here, and it kind of separates in that and it expands. So that, you know, it's distressing. It's very distressing for women, then distressing for men as well, but uh, certainly it's, you know, it's 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 more common in men than it is women, um, and uh, really the treatments we, we focus on are to try to get to this before you're at stage seven, right? So you, you know, these these are these are kind of advanced. When you get to advanced, it is hard to, to reverse this. Okay. So talk to us a little bit about some of the remedies that we've tried in the past. Okay. So I mean, this has been the holy grail, right? This is what everybody's been trying to find a cure for. Traveling salesmen from hundreds of years ago will be going around selling different tonics, different hats, different lasers, um, anything to uh, to promote hair growth. So, you know, it's, we had the thermal cap in the 1920s. Um, the first hair transplant was done in Japan in 1939. So this is something that has been, you know, very topical for many, many years. And um, you can see, like, the, the hair plugs are something that uh, came out at one stage as part of that hair transplant. So you can see they're, they're always in kind of exact rows. Um, I think Joe Biden has them, but uh, we try to look at some pictures, but you can see some of his older photographs. He has the exact row of hair, and those were called the hair plugs. Um, then there was the uh, comb over, right? But I don't think that was the, the 1970s look. <laughs> <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't do that. And then uh, there, was, there was a drug called minoxidil, uh, which is Regain or Rogaine that people will know of. Um, and again, that just stimulates the, uh, the blood flow of the hair follicles. And then in 1998, they started using finasteride, which I'll talk about uh, in the next slide. So there have been medications, but it's been, a lot of it's been kind of tonics and things that don't work and haven't been clinically proven to work. And, you know, I'd say minoxidil and finasteride were the first medications that they did clinical trials. 
and you can see the science of why it actually works. Well, I'm happy to report that we have come a long way in modern medicine from two peas and comb overs. Yes, okay. And it's so important for our clients to know what the different treatment options are out there, what's evidence-based, what are the risks and benefits of all of the treatments. So tell us a bit about what treatments are available today. Okay, so you can look at, there's medications that are suitable for men only, and then men and women. Um, so the first one is finasteride, Propecia. And this actually blocks the conversion of testosterone to DHT. So that's the, the male hormone that if you are so inclined or if you have the genes for it, um, you want to stop the production of the DHT. Now, testosterone has a function in men and women. And so the side effect for men, they can have decreased libido, they can have erectile dysfunction, they can have gynecomastia where they start developing breasts. So it's, that can be a hard sell for some people. Yeah. Um, some people don't get those side effects, but... That's kind of the one that where people will come back, they can have a great full head of hair, but uh, they have other issues, right? So uh, that uh, is, it's, it doesn't uh, work for everybody. Um, the next one is minoxidil. It's used for men and women. Um, this basically improves the hair or the blood flow to the hair follicles. It comes as a, a spray, it comes as a foam. Um, and this is one that we often keep people on even when we do PRP, and there is the option for men, and we, I will prescribe it. Um, if a man, a man like a male wants to try finasteride in addition to PRP, it can augment it and improve it if there's no side effects. So you have to watch out for side effects. There's a drug called a Dactone or spir Spiralactone, which we use for females only. Um, again, it's a it's a diuretic, so the, one of the side effects of it, it, it does help promote hair growth, but it does uh, you lose or you increase potassium in your, in your in your system, so you should get some blood work done. Uh, can lower your blood pressure, so again, it does have side effects. Uh, hair transplant is is invasive; it is surgery, um, but it is it's very successful, right? So, but it's it's pricey, um, but it's certainly it's an option for people as well. We don't I don't think anybody in Sarnia is doing hair transplants. I know they're not doing hair transplants here in Sarnia, um, <laughs> but uh, PRP. This is what we heard about talking about today, and this is a non-invasive. I mean, it's, it's invasive as invasive as an injection. But there's no actual surgery for it. Um, and this is something using your body's own healing and growth factors uh, to promote hair growth. So that's what we we're talking about today. So there's when we put a package together, we do a consult for somebody, we'll look at all the options. If finasteride is something you, you're currently taking, we continue, you can continue on it. If you're on minoxidil, which is Rogaine or Regain, we can continue. If you're on spiraloctone, we can also continue it. So we're not looking to stop treatments, but um, if you find one successful and you're having side effects or another, we can stop one. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so pop quiz. Let's see who's been paying close attention. So the first people to respond from both Facebook and Instagram will be the winner of a $25 Metastatics gift card. So tell us, what is the cause of androgenic alopecia? Is it A, genetics, B, wearing a hat too often, C, wearing your unlucky jeans, or D, using too much shampoo? These are your questions? Um, Sorry, you're 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 yeah, it's your list, yeah, today. <laughs> yeah. I think John may have thrown us off when you said you can't change your genes. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, that's going to make this question more tricky. Okay, so I have a winner on Facebook. Okay, so who's a winner on Facebook? I'm not Caroline. Okay, yep. And... No one yet on Instagram, but Instagram's a little bit delayed. So when we do get a winner, I'll be sure to just take their information and then reach out to them tomorrow. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So we know PRP has been around since the 70s. Yep. It was first introduced to treat some blood disorders. It's also been widely used with sports-related injuries, for hair growth, for collagen production, healing wounds and scars. I've heard of PRP being referred to as liquid gold. Tell us a little bit more about the benefits for hair loss. Okay, so you'll, you'll see why they call it liquid gold and you see what the, the color of it is, but that's, uh, that's where it gets the same from. It all goes back to the growth factors. We talked about the growth factors before. So um, basically it will maintain and increase the blood flow to your, your hair follicles. And that's how it really works. Uh, if you look at the next slide, um, we just talked about the epidermal growth factors, the vascular and epithelial growth factors, fibroblast growth factors, 
and play the derived growth factor. So it's really what we're talking about is growth factors. We're injecting them into the hair follicles at four millimeters, which is where the, the, the hair follicle. And this is going to stimulate hair growth. So increase blood supply, make it a healthier follicle, and start the, start the regrowth for a lot of people. So. Excellent. So it's really going to stimulate new growth. Stimulate new growth, prevent, yeah. Prevent loss of further hair. Yeah, so that's, that's the goal. And it's so it will strengthen the hair follicle. So you get better quality hair, thicker hair, stronger hair. Really is, the, uh, is the goal of it. Okay, so which is of the following is not an advantage of PRP? Is it A, it uses your body's own healing and growth factors, B, it has a fast recovery time, C, it teaches you long division, or D, it has a quick treatment time? So not an advantage, okay? Not an advantage. Okay. These are tricky. Okay. So Nadine Cardoza. Okay, so we'll make sure Nadine you come and collect your gift card uh, tomorrow. That would be wonderful. Okay, so we know who's the ideal candidate. Okay. We know what the treatment is. So let's talk a little bit more about the protocol, what clients can expect when they call us to book a consultation. So when you book a consultation, I'll see you in my office first. We'll assess to make sure it's the appropriate type of hair loss uh, for the PRP treatment. Again, that's the androgenic one that we put a class of use, a male and female balding pattern is the class of one that we need to treat. Uh, again, if you have another type of alopecia, I will assess. If I think you need to be sent somewhere else, then we'll do that. So send it back to your own family doctor or a nurse practitioner. Um, but before, and for males, we don't all, we don't have to allow work on all males. If it's a classic male balding pattern, I don't need to do that. Uh, typically, for females, we'll have to sometimes do some more investigations uh, if they're having if they're having hair loss. So make sure it's nothing. It's not a virilization. It's not a testosterone issue. Um, it's not something else. So okay. make sure it's not collagen epithelium, um, which again it will come back, right? So it's, it's the female balding pattern that we'll do some lab work on. All right. So once you've ruled that. A person is a good candidate yeah. for PRP, what's next? So we talk about the, the PRP protocol, which is typically coming and seeing us monthly for three months. And then we see you at the six month mark to evaluate the hair growth or hair regrowth. And then it's typically every six to 12 months after that, you may need a maintenance program. So just like, like minoxidil, like finasteride, if you stop doing treatments, you'll lose the blood flow and the increased growth factors to your hair follicles, and you'll kind of you will reverse the process. So it is something there's yet to be a treatment that doesn't do that except for a hair transplant. So everything does require ongoing treatment, but the intense treatments are, well, the, the regular treatments the first three months, monthly, and then we see you at six months, and then every six to nine months or 12 months after that. So on day one, when you come in, we start off by doing, taking a blood sample. This is us getting the PRP. So we need to dry your blood, and we need to spin it, and we need to get the liquid going out. So. So again, so we'll, well, I think we have another video in a second, but we basically take out the uh, the PRP and we make the injections into the uh, into the hair follicles at four millimeters, and we have rigs that we use, and we have a, a certain pattern protocol that we'll use for that. But again, most of them are using the smallest needle, like a needle that you inject uh, like basically insulin with, and going to four millimeters. So I'll show you a video. We'll do some talking as we go through it, um, and it kind of goes quickly. So we'll speak quickly. I do that anyway. Okay, so draw the blood, easy. Um, we take about 20 cc's of blood, and we normally just take it from this part of your arm, and we spin it, so this is the centrifuge. We come out, you see the, the PRP, which is the, 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 the gold colored uh, liquid. We separate it from the blood using a special device, and now we're left with pure PRP. We clean the scalp. We've already investigated. We've already put our grids in. We know where we're going to be injecting. And uh, we use a freestyle, freestyle injection technique here. Um, again, using going down to the four millimeter depth and following grids across the area. So we're going to fast forward it, but we're going in every, every centimeter and injecting throughout the scalp. And we, we inject pretty quickly because the PRP has to be injected quickly. We can't keep it for 10, 15 minutes. We have a process we go pretty uh, with that assistant. And we get through this scalp uh, within five minutes. Do your clients find this painful or do they tolerate it well? So it is, there is pain. Um, you're getting multiple needles into your scalp. Um, 
we've looked at using freezing and it, it gets we've done we've done like half the scalp with uh with, with, with like lidocaine or freezing and the patients have said there's no difference so you have a messy kind of kind of a lot of goof on one side and the other side that they've been noticing a difference so you can if somebody's really not tolerating it um you can do scalp blocks or certain nerve blocks you can do so if somebody basically can't tolerate it we can do that so that, that's always an option as well okay great so let's talk about some respect results that we can expect from this treatment yeah so there's no i mean as we know in our brain life nothing is 100 percent. so especially with hair loss there's no uh, treatment that gives you 100 you know, percent regrowth of your hair the what we're trying to do is increase the number of hairs increase the thickness of the hair increase the strength of the roots so that's that's the goal of treatment um, and PRP has been shown to, to do that in the right candidate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at some before and afters. Yeah. So tell yeah. us what you see here. I think these are your typical male, male balding pattern. So again, that's the crown there that the uh, patient's balding. Um, and you can see the, uh, the, the hair regrowth. And that's not a full comb over. You can see there's still, there's still some scalp visible. That's not a, you know, you'd still get more, this would be the, after the first three treatments of the six month mark. You can definitely see an increase in the, the hair growth there. Yeah, excellent results. Yeah, same, same thing here. This would be one that, you know, we wouldn't want to be pushing it much further um, past that for hair loss to get, to get the response that you want to get. Um, again, he's probably lost more than 20%, but this is an excellent uh, result as well. So, uh, again, it's it's everybody's, um, all the results are different, right, for, for different people, but this is an excellent result here. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget about the women. Yeah, and that's what we find. Uh, probably most of our, our candidates uh, who have been who have interest in this, and the patients I see in my office will be women um, who come because it is very distressing for them, right? So we uh, certainly this is the classic pattern. So with the midline pattern, they're starting to widen, and you can see the improvement here on the, on the right hand side. So yeah, this is the uh, these are the patients. You know, we love helping all patients, but this is uh, when you get a good result on uh, a female patient, it makes you feel good. Yeah, it's very rewarding. Awesome. Same here is the classic, uh, this classic pattern again down the midline, and uh, you can see some, some good uh, before and afters here as well using the PRP. So, okay, so what can somebody expect after the procedure? Yeah, so straightforward. Most people will, will leave. They won't. They won't be bleeding or scabbing. There's minimal. You know, it's, again, we're using some very small four millimeter, uh, four millimeter needles. You know, you have some some swelling maybe and some tenderness to your scalp after. Avoid any heavy exercise, you know, getting your hair wet for the first 24 hours after. Um, you can use you know, Tylenol for pain if you're having pain, and you're back to your normal activities after 24 hours. So there's no downtime for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And for us, results, I mean, it takes, you know, we don't even, we'll see you uh, for your 30, 60, 90 day treatment. So every month for three months, and we don't see you for three months unless you have an issue and want to come back. That's our typical protocol. Sometimes we'll be extended if there's a uh, larger area and we, we feel we need to get more PRP and we can add a fourth like a fourth month so and then see you two months after that and then we see you every six to twelve months and we have some protocols where it's just we fix it at every eight months for injection otherwise it's every six to twelve months okay. yeah so this let me say like the, the best candidates will be those who haven't had it's androgenic so they still have hair in the areas it's not completely like my front area probably wouldn't get growth, but up here we'll be, and you'll be doing mine shortly, okay? Yeah. So we'll be doing up here gets it. So th these are these are good examples of patients who would get a good result, okay? So these are, this this person is still growing his hair out of it, but if he were to shave it, he'd have a classic M shape there as well. So that would be a good candidate for this. So, you know, 20% hair loss is, would be great because uh, we hope we get 20% regrowth or close to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Okay, so a pop quiz. Who out of these candidates is would be ideal for PRP? And you may choose multiple answers. Okay, so our answers are in transit. So I'll just maybe talk you through this as well. Um, so, the fellow, Mr. B is is not. He's too far gone. I'm sorry, but uh, he's not the guy we're uh, he's not the guy we're treating. Okay, so 
that is, um, you know, if, if he was younger and he just shaved his head and he still had, he had, he had good hair follicles there, he could certainly try injecting. Uh, unfortunately, this fella here has either scarring or alopecia areata, so these hair follicles will not respond. And these are the two classic cases again, the androgenic, which is A and C, so that's your classic male balding pattern and your female balding pattern. So the answer will be A So the first C. person to answer correctly was Sean B. O'Reilly. Okay, Sean. So $50 gift certificates um, or $50 gift card, right? To, uh, 25. 20, is it 25? <laughs> we'll give Sean 50. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have to give the others 50. <laughs> Very are, good. Are you right? kicking me? No, nope, um, no. Nope. Okay. okay, so now let's talk about, we talk about membership, so we won't put all the details. But people, the question is, how much does it cost? So we always have to look at um, uh, basically the treatment protocols, but the, we, have a, we have a membership program. You know, you look at when we were pricing, the pricing is, is you look across Ontario, will range from, you know, when they like 700, 800 to thousands of dollars of treatments. Um, so we, we will give you a customized treatment plan more competitive than any of these uh, ones that are you anywhere near Toronto or anything else like that, right? So we'll sit and talk about it. We do the first, first three treatments, you know, we try to average them about $650 per treatment uh, would be the average to do it. And then after that, you have a maintenance program. That's before you apply any, any of the memberships to it, right? So if you are getting a quote for it, you'll get 20% taken off if you become a Sapphire member, 15% um, off if you're Amethyst, and 10% off if you're Jade. So if you're going through this process, you know, is it, are you looking at like an $1,800, $1,900 investment before you, uh, starting off before you uh, get into a membership? You would, but if you get into a membership right away, you can get 20% off that, right? So that's gonna be three, $300 off uh, for those three treatments, and we do, a package after that for maintenance. So there are we make it we make it so it's it's worth people's while if they're looking to to uh, to invest in this. So it's not uh, it is an investment, um, but when you when you look at the cost of like minoxidil, you look at the cost of all these other medications you're going to be taking monthly. Mm -hmm. and you look at the side effects of taking these medications. So if you're male and you're on finasteride and you're having all the sexual dysfunction and other side effects, you know it's you got to look at is this this worth your is this worth your money. Um, those people who do want to have a uh, payment system, you have something called PayBright. It allows you to break down your payments uh, either buy weekly or monthly installments. Um, so we've been using that where it's the number one financing option in Canada. It's designed for this, these types of clinics, plastic surgery clinics, cosmetic, cl cosmetic clinics, and we're an exclusive allergen clinic. So we're able to provide this uh, as an option. It's literally as simple as, as just you know, uh, putting out a QR code and getting approved uh, in the clinic often. Okay, so don't forget to click on the link to find the contact form so that we can get in touch with you to book a consultation. And if you do book that uh, treatment, you will receive a $50 metastatics gift card towards that treatment. Okay. Do we have any questions? We just had two questions. So the first one is, Dr. John, would you use it? Uh, yes, I would. Yes, I have to. Without hesitation. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes no awesome. problem. Um, and the next one, I think they're talking about the medications that you were speaking of. So can you use any of these medications with Jardiance or any BP meds? Yeah, so yes, you can. So so one of the medications uh, that people are already using is, is aldoctone or spironolactone. So that's already a blood pressure medication, so that's not a problem at all. And uh, certainly Jardiance is a, is, a, is a diabetic medication. There's no contraindication. So there, there are none for that. And even people on blood thinners, they can still, still do it. Awesome. Again, they're like four millimeter injections and they go very shallow. Okay. Okay. So if anybody's interested in learning more, um, they can just uh, fill out the consultation form. We'll be happy to see you in our office. And uh, we're excited about providing this service to all the clients and people on Sony. Yeah. Thank Sorry, you. Sorry for joining us. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Bye.